Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and if you're looking for a visually dynamic video, you tuned into the wrong place. But I just wanted to share this information, and this is a time period about 12,800 years ago that I have made quite a few videos on, and I just find it fascinating in the work of Randall Carlson, and of course Graham Hancock and John Anthony West and others that hint at this time period 12,800 years ago that we are just starting to wrap our heads around. But this is a new study that came out by the University of South Carolina, and I just want to read. <clears throat> Excuse me. No one knows for certain why the Clovis people and iconic beasts, the Mastodon, Mammoth, and saber to Tiger, living some 12,800 years ago, suddenly disappeared. However, a discovery of widespread platinum at archaeological sites across the U.S. by three University of South Carolina archaeologists has provided an important clue in solving this enduring mystery. The research findings are outlined in a new study released Thursday, March 9th in Scientific Reports, a publication in Nature. The study, authored by 10 researchers, builds on a similar findings of platinum, an element associated with cosmic objects like asteroids or comets found by Harvard University researchers in an ice core from Greenland in 2013. The South Carolina researchers found an abundance of platinum in soil layers that coincided with the Younger Dryas, a, cl a climatic period of extreme cooling that began around 12,800 years ago and lasted about 1,400 years. While the brief return to Ice Age conditions during the Younger Dryas has been well documented by scientists, the reasons for it and the demise of the Clovis people and animals have remained unclear. Now, there are theories out there that the so-called Clovis people, and that's just what we know them as, who knows what this culture was called originally, what their native language called their civilization. But the theory is that these Clovis people just overhunted the mammoths and the other large megafauna at this time period. And personally, um, I find that a little ridiculous. I think the only time when a species gets wiped out is when you hunt for sport and totally overkill. And I think these people would kill just what they needed and left the rest to reproduce. And I've heard other people say that. And that is just what makes the most sense to me. Going on here, it says platinum is a very rare in the Earth's crust, but it is common in asteroids and comets, says Christopher Moore, the study's lead author and archaeologist at Carolina. He calls the presence of platinum found in soil layers at 11 archaeological sites in California, Arizona, New Mexico, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina an anomaly. The presence of elevated platinum in archaeological sites is a confirmation of data previously reported for Younger Dryas onset several years ago in a Greenland ice core. The authors for that study concluded that most likely the source of such platinum enrichments was from the impact of an extraterrestrial object, Moore says. Our data shows that this anomaly is present in sediments from U.S. archaeological sites that date to the start of the Younger Dryas event. It is a continental in scale, possibly global, and it's consistent with the hypothesis that an ex extraterrestrial impact took place. And going back to Randall Carlson's work, he has spent 30 years of uh, his life basically doing independent research on this event. And I stated that he said that this is the worst event in the last couple hundred thousand years. But I actually listened to that interview with uh, Joe Rogan and Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson. And he said it was the worst event on this planet, <coughs> excuse me, in the last five million years based on the number of species that went extinct at that time period. And just going on here, it says, Moore says that that would indicate an, an extinction event for North America. He also says that the platinum anomaly is similar to the well-documented finding of iridium, another element associated with cosmic objects that scientists have found in rock layers dated 65 million years ago from an impact that caused the dinosaur extinction. And of course, that uh, impact was in the Gulf of Mexico around the Yucatan. In both cases, the anomalies represent the atmospheric fallout of rare elements resulting from an extraterrestrial impact, Moore says. And I don't think we have really wrapped our head around what a comet coming into this atmosphere and impacting Earth would actually do. And one of the things, would it bring that extremely cold layer 
from the upper Earth's atmosphere all at once down on Earth? Is that why the you know the mammoths got frozen? It seems all all at once because they still had stuff in their stomach. And uh, Randall Carlson said, in order for those processes to take place and how those mammoths were actually found, the temperature would have to get down to 150 below zero. So there are many different things about a comet impact that, man, I just don't think we realize how devastating that would be. And they have said pretty much wildfires got set all over North America. And now just going on, it says... Mark Brooks, a geoarchaeologist who conducts research and excavations at the Savannah River site, and archaeologist Albert Goodyear, who has spent decades documenting Clovis culture at the famed Topper site, Topper located in Annandale, Allendale, excuse me, County, South Carolina, along the banks of the Savannah River, is considered one of the most pristine U.S. sites for research on Clovis, one of the earliest ancient people. Goodyear's work with Moore builds on research in which he found traces of extraterrestrial elements, including iridium, at the Younger Dryas layer at Topper that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in 2012. It says, Moore, Goodyear, and Brooks conduct research through the South Carolina Insti Institute of Anthropology and Archaeology in the University's College of Arts and Sciences. In addition to Topper, the remaining 10 archaeological sites that Moore, Goodyear, and others on their team conducted research in in 2016, including Arlington Canyon on Santa Rosa Island, California, Murray Springs, Arizona, Blackwater Draw, New Mexico, Sheridan Cave, Ohio, Squires Ridge and Barber Creek in North Carolina, and Kolb, Flamingo Bay, John Bay, and Penn Point in South Carolina. Moore says the bottom line of the study and paper in the journal Scientific Reports is the presence of of an easily identifiable hemispheric marker, platinum, and sediment layers for the start of the Younger Dryas. That discovery contributes to the body of evidence that a potential cosmic impact event occurred and warrants further scientific investigation. And a lot of people um, that have investigated this time period know something about the Carolina Bay, these little impacts in this area of the United States, and this comet could have, you know, come in and disintegrated and just hit the Earth like buckshot and created all these uh, small little impact marks out in the ocean. And even on land, this is Google Earth, and this is a lake I talked about in a video maybe about three years ago. But this is a lake. It's about five miles long, and they say this is less than 15,000 years old, and it was obviously created by a, a impact coming in from the northwest to the southeast. That is why it is larger on the southeast and the land is kind of pushed up in this area. If And uh, it's kind of shallower here. So whatever came in, came in from the northwest and created this lake less than 15,000 years ago, probably the same time that the comet hit the ice pack on the North American ice sheet. I just wanted to show you that. But I just find this uh, period of history fascinating because we know little about it and just new research has bringing out this time period that we call the Ice Age and the Younger Dryas, but people really don't know a lot about it or why it ended. And the theory put out by the Standard Model of History, there isn't any atmospheric or thermal evidence to back up what we have been taught. So I think people like Randall Carlson and these people who are scholars we're doing kind of out of the mainstream research. I think it's very important because, you know, maybe we can learn a lot from what happened in this planet's past. Now, there is still some debate what happened 12,800 years ago, but I think if you look at all the evidence compiled and put together, even mainstream scholars now are starting to look at this evidence and come up with confirming evidence that North America was the site of the most catastrophic impact event in the last five million years on this planet. We had lakes created in this time period. We have evidence of massive flooding in different parts of North America. And there seems to be the same microspherical evidence, nano diamonds and iridium and platinum at sites all over North America, even out here in the island off California. So, I don't think we have even wrapped our heads around how catastrophic this event was. 
large species all went extinct at once, and who knows if there is a civilization here that just could not survive this. We lost thousands of square miles of land when the sea levels went up. It changed the face of the earth. I'm done babbling. You have a nice day.